each other because tradition would not permit them to marry people of non-royal class. Unfortunately, there was a high amount of mentally retarded and handicapped royals throughout European history, and that shows the unhealthy consequences of inbreeding. Day Pakistani Muslims who are among the uh, elite, I would say, you know, highly intelligent. Wait, did, did you hear, Rabbi, did you hear a word I said? Rabbi, did you hear a word that I just said? Yes. That after well, I'm giving, I'm giving you an example of pharaonic dynasties that collapsed from inbreeding. And then I showed you that royal families produced an awful lot of inbred morons. It goes against your, your, your analysis. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I, I guess that's, uh, you, you obviously know genetics uh, much better than... Uh, it's than not that I know it better than you. It's a fa these are facts. These are historical facts. And all I'm saying is that I think that inbreeding should be should be outlawed in all 50 states. First cousin marriage should be prohibited, and it's not limited to Muslims, Jews, Muslims, Christians. I don't care what you are. First cousin marriages should be banned. Now, you know and I know that inbreeding amongst Jews has produced an awful lot of mental illness. Isn't that correct? Mental illness, uh, some of the other hereditary diseases, which uh, would not have to be... Uh uh, they, they, well, I mean, it's, a, it's an uncomfortable statement, but it's a fact of reality. If you look into these insular communities, you're not telling me these are all prizes of health, are they? They, act, they, they explained it, that they actually research each other. Like, it's not simply, you know, two people meet and from the same family and marry. I mean, they, they, they analyze the party that they're marrying, that the party is highly intelligent, uh, you know, good background, even though it's their own family, so to speak. So they're practicing an ancient form of breeding, selective breeding. It's an insular form of, of racism, by the way, that's being practiced. I believe I, what ha I, I mean, that's what I think. I think it's an insular form of racism to not permit anyone outside the family lineage to marry is a form of racism, isn't it? Yes, I guess they assume that they are they are better than anyone else, and they all right. So we, at least we've crossed that hurdle together. But now let's look at the health of the children, which should be paramount in our discussion. Unfortunately, it does not produce a vigorous uh, child. In most cases, it produces the opposite. It's well known in genetics, whether it's with livestock or humans, that hybrid vigor is something you would learn in high school if you didn't go to a yeshiva or a or a uh, or a, a madrasas. You would learn that hybrid vigor results from from uh, outbreeding, not from inbreeding. It's true, but I just let that view with some. Right, look, at least you're, you're you know you're a rabbi and an intelligent man willing to discuss something. I could just imagine what would have happened if one of the Lubavitch had called me. What what kind of heck I would have had to put up with on this radio show? They'd be screaming at me like I was a monster for daring to even raise a, a scientific point. You know, I had the same discussion years ago. And the heck I got for it, you'll never believe. I was talking about circumcision. And that form of ritual circumcision that's practiced amongst some of these people is, is so Neanderthal-like, it's frightening. Where they do things to the infant baby, you know what I'm talking about? They don't even use a surgical instrument, that they use their mouths. Did you know that? I do. That's a bit... No, I know. We can laugh all you want. I had rabbis calling me and cursing me in person for daring to raise this topic saying this barbaric practice is sickening. Not only is it sickening from the point of view of hygiene, but you're passing viruses onto the child. And there are many cases in these communities of the child becoming ill from the rabbi biting the... Uh, sub I don't want to spell it out. It's psychotic. And they tell me, how do you know? It's in the Bible. You should do it. I, I'm telling you, you know, the, the stupidity of people who practice any religious teaching to the letter of the law is is astounding to me. The, the one who's performing the circumcision has an illness himself and is passing it on to the poor innocent child. And it happened. Correct. It's happened, and I had Orthodox Jews tell me I'm 100% right. The hospitals will report that this is true. So what are we actually talking about? We started by talking about inbreeding with Muslims. Now we're talking about inbreeding with Jews. Now we're talking about biblical practices that are insane from the point of view of hygiene itself. When they were originally written, allegedly, to protect the people in the tribe, some of these practices are actually harming the people in the tribe. Am I correct? No, I'm not suggesting that Orthodox Jews go out and have a shrimp and pork sandwich. I didn't say that. 
That's what they're afraid of. They say it's a slippery slope. Once you stop practicing the, the Torah to the letter of the law, the five books of Moses, then the next thing you know is you'll have me eating pork and cutting off my beard. I didn't say that. Isn't there some rationality somewhere along the way? So, so therefore, intelligence and common sense plays a very large role in interpreting what the Bible means. And you Thank you very much. That's exactly right. Now, I do every show, every show I do, I have a Bible in, in, my, in my office. Ask anybody who knows me. I could swear on a, not a stack of Bible, but my Bible. Here's the Old Testament. Robert, am I holding it up? Robert, go on the air and tell him yes. My producer's sitting there right there looking at the screen. I am looking Come at on. Skype, and I see the Bible in Michael's hand. It is there. Right. And, and how, how many post-its are in this Bible? Hundreds of them. So I, I've read the Bible, chapter and verse, but if you read Leviticus, chapter and verse, half the people in the street, you'd have to go kill them with a knife. So who does that? Nobody. It doesn't work like that. You see what, Rabbi, in other words, you're, you're a rabbi, so I don't know what, uh, what, uh, what sect of Judaism do you practice? Reform, orthodox, liberal, what are you? You're taking the literal word, but we are modern traditional jews who realize there's an interpretive part of our religion okay so in exodus where it says an eye for an eye or in uh specifically the the, the one book that gets most people in trouble is leviticus that's where homosexuals are, are stoned to death adulteresses are stoned to death a person with a disease is stoned to death nobody should practice such things is that right we was crazy you don't do those things to people and yet, well, we see that there are parts of the world where they still do. The Saudi Arabia cuts the hand off uh, a, a thief. Where they get it from? Well, they say they got it from the Quran, and the Quran got it from the Bible. Am I correct? Uh, <laughs> no. Where did they get it from? The, the, it didn't the, the Jewish Bible predate the Quran? That's a fact of reality. I'm going to get some maniac screaming, "No, you're making it up." It's historically a fact. If you want to be a pseudo-historian and change history, you can change history and say the Quran came first. It didn't. The first of the monotheistic religions is Judaism. The second is Christianity. And the third is Islam. That's a fact of reality. Every educated Muslim knows that. They all claim allegiance to Father Abraham. It's a shame that they can't get along better with each other since they're basically all right. But they did. Here's the terrible truth. By the 9th or 10th century, Muslims and Jews were corresponding and producing advances in science and mathematics and now we have an isis group that appears that wants to drag the muslim world back to the seventh century not even the ninth century the greatest rabbi that we ever had after moses was a fellow named maimonides and his education he was a philosopher and a doctor and his yes, knowledge and, and, uh, let, let me hold it rabbi i can't help this one he was the rambam and he wrote, he who saves a single life as though he has saved the entire world. Was that not his writings? Oh, I, I didn't hear what you said. It was the Rambam, Maimonides, in the 1300s who wrote, he who saves a single life, it is as though he has saved the entire world. Is that not from his writings? But he's quoting the Talmud. There it was. Ah, so it is from the Talmud. That's very interesting. So how do you have a religion who says he who takes a single life, it is as though he has saved the entire world? How do they twist things like that? Why do Jews produce so many doctors and healers? Because it's inherent in their teachings to heal people and save lives. That's where a religion could come in handy. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. It is a shock when you read the Old Testament, and you don't take it literally. If you do, Leviticus would have you turn into a mass murderer. You may as well go join ISIS. You can become a slaughterer of, of, of people you don't like for any reason in the world. So people know not to take it literally. Not when it comes to the killing and the murdering. I mean, read it. I'm not going to read it to you now. It's in Leviticus, of all the books. So where does that leave us? What kind of immigrants do we want? Anyone? You don't want to discriminate, is that it? You don't want to, you don't want to, what does the word discriminate mean? It means to dif differentiate. Why shouldn't you differentiate? When my grandfather, or actually when my father came here, he had to go through a discrimination process. If he had leprosy, they wouldn't let him into America. Why would they lead, let him in with leprosy? They wouldn't. They send them back. Why would they let a man in with a disease? They wouldn't. They send them back. Now there's no problem. Just bring him right into Europe 
And if you saw, and I'm not even going to do this today, I'll do it maybe tomorrow, God willing, the diseases that are pouring into Europe right now from the refugees that have broken their borders down thanks to the monster, Angela Merkel, I think your hair would stand up. I'll read you the legion of diseases that were eradicated in Europe that are now appearing. Ask the doctors, ask the nurses. These are hidden facts of reality. The Africans, the Middle Easterners are bringing in diseases that had been, that had been eradicated in Europe. Why would the leaders of Europe do this? If you think it's by accident, you're mistaken. It's by design. Through multiculturalism, they will annihilate the dominant European cultures, which will disappear. Why would Europeans do that, you ask? If you can't put two and two together, then you can't come up with four. Because Obama and Hillary are of the same mindset. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7287. Savage. Well, you know, whether you like Trump or not, he has uh, forced us to talk about immigration. Before him, you couldn't do it. I had dinner years ago with uh, Romney. I told you that before he ran for the presidency. He met me in San Francisco. He had dinner. He's a very nice man. But when I brought up immigration, he got very nervous, and he said, well, we can't talk about it because of the Hispanic voters. That's what he said. So Romney, as you well know, went down in flames while um, Trump is rising every day of the week because he's saying what most Americans want to hear. They want to talk about it. We're talking about discriminating as to who we bring into the country if, if you want to bring anyone in at all. I'm very clear. In Government Zero, the most important book you could possibly buy for this season, point three is no immigration for seven years. No immigration. It's not this, this picking on anyone. Zero from anywhere till we sort out who's here. Okay, so we've covered that one. Now let's go to the callers. <clears throat> John on line nine on WBAP in Dallas. Nice to hear from you. What's on your mind, John? Yes, you, you haven't meditated on the Torah long enough to understand about what you're saying. Okay, because those. Uh, okay, Rabbi. Pro uh, Rabbi, I'm humiliated by you. I feel humiliated by your genius. So, what does Leviticus say that I can't read in plain English? Rabbis are the wrong people. The, the wrong people have advised you. I'm a Karaite Jew. Okay, so uh, I don't. I don't care if you're an M and M Jew. It doesn't matter to me. I have the Bible in my hand in English. So now you're going to tell me that this translation is wrong? The Masoretic text is wrong? No, it doesn't say that. That is for the, in the land of Israel, okay? And actually... Okay. Wait, wait, sir, what is in the land of Israel? The laws of Moses pertain to the people in the land of Israel. In so where are we disagreeing? I'm saying most modern Jews, even Orthodox Jews, don't practice Leviticus literally. So where are we disagreeing? We're not in the land, and Moses told us that we would be kicked out Again, of the land. Again, you're not hearing a word I'm saying. You came on the show in order to show what a great rabbinical scholar you are, but we're saying the same thing in different ways, aren't we? No, we're not, because we're oh, Because you're a rabbi, you wear the holy moly outfit, so therefore you have to be superior to everybody. You were doing what got us kicked out in the first place, not keeping the law. Okay, you say you support Israel, and what you're advocating would get us never back into the land. Never. Because Wait, I, I missed that. Sorry, your phone is breaking up. What am I advocating? You're advocating that we should not get the law anymore. Okay, look. Well, I'm sir, ho, ho, hold on. I never said that. I said that if you practice the laws as laid down in Leviticus, you'd have to kill most people around you. That's what I said. I know you think that Genesis is a poem and all this and that. Okay. But sir, will you please speak a little more succinctly? What did you just say? I couldn't hear you. Sorry. You, you said... I've heard you say before that, that Genesis is a poem. You don't believe it for a second. Well, let, let's focus on, on Leviticus. Let's focus on Leviticus. If a man lie with mankind as with womankind, both, both of them have committed abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Is that not in plain English? Yes, and it's absolutely the, the, the way that it watches. Okay? And, and so I told you that that's something that Jews don't practice. Isn't that what we are agreeing Right, but we don't have to write until we're back in our land to impose. I don't know why I can't hear him either. His phone is no good. I don't know what you just said. I just said we don't practice. Modern Jews, Orthodox or not, may read that, but they don't practice it. Isn't that what we're both saying? That's because we have not returned. Our kingdom is not here. 
our bad phone connection. Uh, sir, try to buy.